the problem in type 1 pulmonary hypertension is at the level of small pulmonary arterioles. I'll repeat, the problem is at the level of small pulmonary arterioles. And that's why you will not be able to pick up this disease angiographically because this is a disease of small pulmonary arterioles. And what is the first event? Most of the times there will be inflammation called as arteritis and that is going to trigger vasoconstriction. And it can occur because of some known cause or unknown cause. We don't know exactly for sure. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But it's going to produce subtle arteritis and vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction will be followed by further sequence of events where there will be smooth muscle proliferation. Smooth muscle proliferation and ultimately leading to complete obliteration of these arterioles. And these arterioles will disappear ultimately. Because the caliber of these arterioles are going to decrease over a period of time, there will be significant increase in the pulmonary vascular resistance. The resistance offered by the pulmonary vascular bed in patients with type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension will be very very high because of this sequence of changes. And there are plenty of mediators involved uh, in the setting of type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension but two are very important. One is endothelin 1 which is important uh, for therapy and second is BMPR that is bone morphogenic protein receptor which is important for diagnosis especially for familial pulmonary artery hypertension and idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension most of these patients are going to have BMPR mutations. So endothelin 1 BMPR apart from that you have tons and tons of molecules that are involved in type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension but two are important I'll repeat endothelin 1 and BMPR bone morphogenic protein receptor. So what will be the findings in the setting of type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension? Type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension is also called as pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension. Why it's pre-capillary? You can clearly notice that the problem is before the capillaries in the pulmonary arterioles. That's the reason it's called as pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension. So number one MPAP will be more than or equal to 20 for sure. It will be elevated. There is no doubt about that. Without this, you will not be able to make a diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension in the first place. But how will you say it is pre-capillary? For that, you have to look at something called as pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. It will be normal. It will be typically less than 15 millimeters of mercury. It will be normal. Why? Because it's a pre-capillary problem. It's a problem of pulmonary arterioles the left heart is functioning well. So that is the reason why your PCWP is normal. I told you PCWP is an indirect measurement of left atrial pressure. Only in left heart problems, the PCWP will be elevated. Otherwise, it's going to be normal only. By definition, it should be less than 15 millimeters of mercury. And number three, the transpulmonary gradient will be increased. The transpulmonary gradient will be increased. Why? That is because TPG is equal to MPAP minus PCWP. Here the MPAP alone is rising because of increasing pulmonary vascular resistance but the PCWP is normal. That's why the TPG will increase. And finally last but not the least we can also measure something called as pulmonary vascular resistance with the help of Van Gans catheter and this will be more than 3 wood units. That will be more than 3 wood units. And once you make a diagnosis of pre-capillary type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension, you can also check for something called as vasoreactivity testing. Vasoreactivity testing or you can call it as vasodilator response. Usually we are going to use either inhaled nitric oxide very commonly or we can also use some prostacyclines PGI2 analogs. We'll talk about that in detail later on. If the vasoreactivity test is positive, the vasoreactivity test is positive you can use calcium channel blockers and these patients are going to have a better prognosis. These patients are going to have a better prognosis. What I'm trying to say is after giving a vasodilator like inhaled nitric oxide, if the pulmonary vascular resistance decreases, it comes to less than 3 wood units, then I can say that the vasoreactivity is positive and these patients are responding to vasodilators. So I can start these patients with calcium channel blockers like nifedipin or even amlodipin. If the vasoreactivity testing is negative, then I have to opt for other vasodilators. I cannot use calcium channel blockers in this regards. Even if you are starting with calcium channel blockers because the vasoreactive test is positive, if there is a poor response, there is no sustained response with CCBs, 
you can opt for other vasodilators or combination of different vasodilators and the treatment protocols we'll be discussing at the end of the session. But trust me, for vasoreactivity testing also you need right heart catheterization. So when you will do, the moment you make a diagnosis of pre-capillary type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension, in the same sitting you have to do the vasoreactivity testing also. If it's positive, you can use CCBs and you can assume that these patients are going to have an overall better outcome with reduced mortality. And the treatment of choice for type 1 pulmonary artery hypertension will be some vasodilator, some pulmonary vasodilator. Because you know the problem, the primary problem that has triggered everything is vasoconstriction. So that is the reason why if you are talking about a type 1 pulmonary hypertension, the treatment of choice will be vasodilators. You are talking about pulmonary vasodilators. We have plenty of pulmonary vasodilators apart from the CCBs like your uh, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, sildenafil, tadalafil, endothelial receptor antagonists like bosentan, ambricentan and we have PGI2 analogs like treprostinil, iloprost, so many drugs are there. We will talk about that later on but the treatment of choice, vasodilators and don't forget the vasoreactivity testing, very very important for exams. And what about type 2 pulmonary hypertension? As I said, the type 2 pulmonary hypertension is going to be the most common type of pulmonary hypertension in the world. And this is due to left heart disease. This is due to left heart disease. The left heart problem can be a systolic problem that is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, systolic dysfunction or it could be a diastolic problem like heart failure and preserved ejection fraction or even it could be due to some valvular problem. Valvular heart disease like mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation or severe aortic disease. So it could be anything, some left heart problem. That's it. So because of the left heart disease, which is struggling to move the blood into the iota, there will be accumulation of blood in the pulmonary venous system. That's causing pulmonary venous congestion. And you know, a lot of people are already waiting to move forward. They are not able to move across the left heart into the iota. That is the reason why the overall resistance at the pulmonary venous level is increasing. Resistance at the pulmonary venous level is increasing. That is why technically type 2 pulmonary hypertension is a pulmonary venous hypertension due to left heart disease. But I can say it is a post capillary pulmonary hypertension. Why post capillary? You can clearly notice that here the problem is after the capillaries. That is why it is pulmonary a post-capillary pulmonary hypertension.